a bodybuilder at its root is concerned with self-development through self-mastery. Everybody's on steroids. Everybody. Look at the guys in the Olympia stage. And you're hitting a pose. And, and then you're like... <sighs> when it comes to talking about what choice should be made, it's that unenhanced bodybuilding is the way to go. This is time right now for natural bodybuilding to grow, where everybody's seeing that health is the most important thing. I was never going to be a man's physique. Didn't have much of an off-season. I like his physique better. I'm always very energetic. I will have to put me as one of the greatest. Mr. Olympia was won by the back. All right, I want to ask you a couple of more things uh, you get your opinion on. So, um, growth hormone. Um, what are the, the key um, negative side effects from, 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 from taking growth hormone? So, in the short term, we have the carpal tunnel syndrome. What this is basically means. In the, in, the, in the wrist, we have four tendons, superficial and four deep layer, uh, two layers of tendons that are able to flex the wrist. Within them, like a sandwich, it passes the median nerve. Now, growth hormones are responsible for edema, swelling. We have to know that those tendons are covered by sheaths. It's like the cables, okay, and the cover they have. Those sheaths, when they get swelled, you know, when, when they when they have edema, they compress the median nerve, and we have the so-called carpal tunnel syndrome and the compression of the medial nerve, and then we need the surgical procedure in order to cut the transverse ligament over here and decompress the median nerve. Now, this is the short term. Also, we have pre-diabetic state because GH liberates glucose from the liver into the bloodstream and this is called glycemia and when you eat a lot of junk we, you don't do so much of cardio you have elevated uh, glucose and then this progressively elevates the glycated hemoglobin A1C and progressive, progressively if you abuse on GH and you don't watch out your diet you may have a diabetic state type 2. So that's why they use insulin to compensate these blood sugar levels. Of course, uh, we have in the long term, then we have enlargement of the internal organs, the, the so-called organomegaly, and the most uh, notorious is the cardiomegaly, that heart enlarges as a whole, you know. So Dallas McGarver had a, a heart of 600 grams instead of 300 grams. Rich Piana had a, had a heart, yes, of 800. So they enlarge, you know, uh, as an organ, you know with the exceptions of, of brain and eyeballs that are enclosed in cavities. And of course, the, the, the skin also thickens. Also, the, the nose and the soft tissues, like the tongue and the lips, enlarge also, you know. And uh, perhaps now through the IGF-1, we kick some oncogenes that lead to tumor growth in case you are genetically predisposed. You know, and perhaps you live a reckless lifestyle, and then IGF-1 is responsible for cell proliferation and tumor. Okay, but in the short, but but a low dose of GH is beneficial, of course. Uh, abuse comes with muscle gains, and IGF-1, and then with a plethora of, of side effects in the long term. How does GH work anyway? How does it, how does that substance know what muscle groups to, to actually grow? Like as opposed to like you you, me, you mentioned the organs grow, everything kind of grows, right? Like how does it how yes, does it operate? Because all organs have receptors for IGF one. If you abuse GH, IGF one from the liver is released, and then IGF one is responsible for skeletal muscle growth and for visceral mu muscle growth. Okay, so if you don't abuse GH, there's no problem because you just burn fat. Because we have to know that. In first place, GH burns fat. Like a fat burn. It's a, it's a fat burner, right? When it's in, in proper yes, doses. Yes, that's why when we fast, we burn fat through the GH. But in this in this circumstances, GH is not responsible for muscle growth. GH leads to muscle growth indirectly through the liver that releases HF1 under high doses of 8 IUs a day. So until 4 IUs, we just have cellular growth, I mean, cellular recuperation, recovery, you know, and fat burning, beta oxidation. But if we step on it, then uh, IGF-1 is released, and this is the, the secret to muscle growth. Of course, if we inject IGF-1 itself, it's the same, you know. So what is it, what is it prescribed for, GH? What, what's the actual use of it? Dwarfism, okay, low posture, you know, dwarfism. Turner's, Turner's syndrome in, in children that is also accompanied with dwarfism. Uh, HIV AIDS induced cachexia in the United States, but not in Europe. So 
an HIV positive that goes into muscle wasting, then he can get some GH. And also recently, as Rick Collins uh, posted, it's a recuperation and recovery post-trauma surgical surgery. So if somebody goes into the surgery room, you know, and he has wasting, he can use some GH also that he can recover and his tissues, you know, uh, grow faster. Interesting. Um, so, um, lastly about GH, basically, what if you, what if you take GH for muscle, you know, for muscle growth for a certain amount of time and then you stop completely, what happens? I mean, does it, does, do those gains go away yeah. or? It's true that you, uh, I want to mention also that is an axis that produces GH in the brain, you know, so after 40, you cannot rely on your own GH levels. And if you take a blood test, your IGF-1 levels will be low. So the, the GH replacement therapy has, has a role into that for the, on the aging um, clinics. And I have to mention before that the so-called organomegaly happens also with the enlarged jaw, the cheekbones, the forehead, and the ankles that protrude, okay? Now, about what you asked uh, is, um, what, what if you stop? Apparently, the, there is a growth hormone releasing in, uh, hormone. So uh, this peptide kicks GH production from in the hypothalamus to the hypothesis. And GH is released from the forefront lobe of hypothesis with the so-called adenohypothesis. Now, if you have used GH for bodybuilding reasons and you cut it in cold turkey, obviously, then your hypothesis won't produce anymore. But if you are for, over 40, over 50, Frankly, you cannot rely on your own store, so you have to keep using some of it. Of course, you're gonna feel less recovery. You know, you're gonna earn. You're gonna get. You're gonna uh, go. Uh, you know, you're gonna become fat because you're gonna lose you this um, fat burning effect. But uh, you have to know that as long as you use GAs, you look younger. So the whole good guys. The, the, the use low GHs in the field. Uh, Arnold and Sly also, they use GHs. Clint Eastwood, you know, everybody in Hollywood that... Allegedly. Say, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm assuming, I don't know. Um, so last thing I want to ask you is also the practical advice in your opinion. You know, it seems like a lot of, a lot of people that do um, take steroids, they develop acne. Um, you know, back knee, acne, whatever, right? Combination of things. Uh, what's the, how can that be prevented or, or, or what can they do about it? And so why? acne is the result of DHT. Now steroids metabolize to estrogens and to DHT. DHT is responsible for acne. In order to block DHT, you may use some anti-androgens. So basically substances that block DHT, but you feel less, less, less of a man, you know, so they kill sex drive and they, they, they might give you a slight depression and melancholy. But uh, you have to kill DHT either by those agents, the 5A reductase inhibitors, or you may use some creams that block DHT like as a like acid, you know. You can also use some antibiotics for, for, the, for the, you know, spots. Um, and also you can use purified alcohol, some UV radiation like, uh, sol uh, yeah, like tanning beds. And you have to eat clean. You have to avoid trans fat and saturated fat that leads to inflammation. And mainly eat unsaturated fatty acids like fish, fish oil, for instance. Okay. Kill sugar because sugar is responsible also for, for inflammation through insulin. Okay. So <clears throat> chocolate is not a myth because chocolate is plenty in saturated fat and in sugar that feeds inflammation and acne. Okay. But see, this is something that I also faced during my early years, that acne is, is the result of abusing um, AAS, that uh, the androgenic activity is responsible for DHT production. Mm -hmm. Interesting, wow. So there's really just a lot of different solutions, but you know, it's not one that can actually, because sometimes, you know, it gets very severe, from what I understand. Yes, yes, you can use also Accutane, which is a really strong drug, it comes from retinoic acid, vitamin A. And but it can, be very, it can be very dangerous. I read about that drug, actually. Yes, yes. It can cause uh, malfunctions in the, in the fetus if a woman takes it and she's pregnant. It can also lead to some liver issues and some psychotic episodes, you know? It's crazy, yeah. I, I, there's actually some lawsuits about that. I've read it on, I've read it on like, news. Really? Uh, a couple of, yeah, those was, was major lawsuits. Um, 
about this drug actually. It's responsible for cystic acne, but it's really, really effective, but it's hard also. Yeah. Uh, last thing I want to ask you, uh, one more question. So a lot of people actually wanted me to ask you this, um, and this is obviously an opinion, opinion, right? Um, what's, what's more effective, and I guess in a long run, what's better for bodybuilding? You know, the conventional steroids or SARMs? No, about SARMs. We don't have so vast experience from SARMs. <clears throat> Some are supposedly to work selectively in some androgen receptors. However, they're not as <clears throat> innocent as they allegedly are <clears throat> because SAMs affect HPTA. That's why we have lower sex drive after SAMs. So uh, they, lower, they lower testosterone levels. That's why some people need PCT after SAMs. So assumingly they shouldn't, but in fact they do. Also, they kick some uh, liver enzymes just like the 17 alkylated drugs, the orals. And also they got some dyslipidemia, I faced this in my, in my office. So they mess up with lipids and cholesterol and the fragments, HDL and LDL. So SARMs are not as innocent as they should be. And, and the other thing is I'm, I'm very prejudic, prejudiced and suspicious about the origin of the SARMs because they are sold like supplements. They're not yet, I mean, uh, so uh, mainstream. But they're legal though, right? They're still illegal, SARMs. They, they are. They, it's kind of a, a gray area, not black and white, but uh, everybody can sell SARMs. And, and I don't know, I'm suspicious because they have the, the potential side effects of anabolic steroid pills. Then I guess that they might be faked with some wistful, with some anavar, okay? And uh, some of them, like Osterine, is really, um, you know, notorious to, to work or perhaps... Uh, use other agents in order to improve your HDL like cartering or GW, but uh, I prefer to use safer anabolics like primobolin, like the cadurabolin, like equipos, like testosterone, okay, like masterone, for instance, instead of those SARMs that I guess they're not so anabolic like uh, steroids, you know. We know steroids for, for half, half, for half a century, you know, we know how they work, we know the side effects, so why not to use pharmaceutical grade legitimate steroids instead of those SARMs that they're the new kid in town, the, real, the, the, the new, you know, modern, uh, the new, uh, how to say, I mean. It's not yet tested fully, that's, that's, I understand. And I believe they're also in the, in the list of uh, WADA and USADA, they're banned.